Well, always good to have you, Jim. You ended a recent um, uh, column or, or uh, written piece with the question, so are we heading into a global recession? Uh, and so I guess that's a good place for me to start with you. I think you wrote this about a week ago. Things are changing very quickly. Are we headed into a global recession, Jim? I think it's touch and go, uh, to be quite honest. Uh, you look at the Chinese numbers that were published just after I wrote that piece, they were even worse than I expected. And obviously, as I've discussed endlessly with you guys over the years, past 20 years, China's been the single biggest driver of the world economy. And if that's a sign of what's really going on under COVID lockdown China, then, you know, it's bad. Uh, and then uh, what you guys are just touching on there, and fascinating to listen to you discuss it, you know, it, if the Fed keeps sticking to this seeming tightening for every meeting as far as we can see, and U.S. financial conditions were to tighten a lot more, then I think the, the chances of a recession later this year around the world are, are higher, I'm afraid to say. But, but uh, I suspect the Fed will be as interested in those housing data as uh, some of the other data, because obviously it's a bit more of a lead indicator than some of the stuff, including... Uh, some of the consumer data. So I think we're very delicately balanced. Uh, the fact the bond market, particularly the front end, is rallying obviously suggests that the market is starting to think the Fed might not need to be so tough, which at the core of my piece I wrote last week, because yep. as I'm sure you've looked at, the Bank of England has already come to the conclusion, at least for now, maybe they don't need to be quite as tough as they thought because... The shock going on to real incomes in the UK with higher food and energy prices seems to be pretty horrific. And it's, I have to say it's surprising to hear, me, you, get, hear you guys saying that a lot of people saying it's not so bad in the US. I find that a bit hard to understand, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, well, again, I was going to go right to what you just discussed, higher food and energy uh, costs, uh, perhaps, perhaps uh, making the central banks think twice about their newfound hawkishness. How likely, though, do you think that's going to be, Jim? Well, I don't envy them uh, to be, you know, <clears throat> again, I think I've discussed when I was on with you recently, even before the Russian invasion, it seems to me where things would be going this year would be tough enough already. And this obviously puts another colossal spanner in the works. And they've got to figure out whether the deflationary shock from this vast price increase uh, is bigger than the inflationary potential from it coming on top of other things. And you know, it's not entirely clear to me right now which it is. So I don't envy them. What, what I do find also fascinating that I don't think is getting much airtime, but the ongoing five-year uh, University of Michigan Inflation Expectation Survey, which I've always regarded as some kind of biblical-type fruitful survey, is still remarkably stable. Yeah. Uh, and so... You know, if I were a voting member of the FOMC, if I'd been really hawkish a month ago, I think I'd be backing off a little bit right now. Interesting. And now you started off our conversation by mentioning China as well, which obviously mm. is an important component overall of sort of trying to answer that question about a global recession. Are you surprised, Jim, having followed that country as long as you have, that they haven't changed course on the zero COVID policy? And if they don't, what do you think the implications will be? I jokingly said to uh, a, a quite senior Chinese official uh, recently who, uh, interestingly, uh, was, had been allowed to travel around various key countries of the world, and I know, including the US, and he was here in the UK, that I, I thought I knew the place uh, after 35 years or so of, of following it and quite frequently correctly predicting their reaction function. But maybe, I, maybe it was just all fluke and a coincidence because... The last two or three years, and particularly now with this aggressive zero COVID policy, I don't kind of get it. I mean, with Omicron 2, it's so infectious. The idea that you can get rid of this thing with aggressive lockdowns is kind of for the birds. Uh, and, that you know, it's a, it seems to be an issue about the, the pride of President Xi and, his, and the guys closest to him, but it's... That's, they used to be good at risk management, in my opinion, the Chinese, and yet... Over the past three years, they seem to be almost creating more risks by their own decision making that they then have to deal with. It's very unlike the China of old, and I'm a bit baffled about it, to be quite honest.